happy Monday. It's a, uh, it's like everything's the same and everything is new all at once. That seems to be my theme for the day. <laughs> so, um, uh, I'll get into, uh, I'll go through the announcements, uh, reminder of family and friends day is this Friday. So I know a lot of folks have already cleared it off, but, uh, know that we're closing GitLab's doors. Um, uh, last week, we were talking about scheduling a happy hour for this coming Wednesday. Uh, that is now on the secure stage calendar. Um, we'll play Fibbage. We'll take a trip down memory lane, BYOB. Uh, so we'll, we'll keep it uh, we'll keep it casual. Uh, all right. And uh, this is an FYI, though we may need to talk about it. Um, we're going to do an experiment this week, tomorrow. Uh, for 24 hours turning on a security approvals within the analyzer projects, not GitLab wide. Um, this was a cover. This is something that's been discussed several times in staff meetings and I haven't brought it here yet because it was still, are we doing it? Are we not doing it? What are we going to do? Uh, so it's uh, uh, the approvals go to engineering managers and AppSec. So Nikhil, uh, if Todd were here, he would be part of the approval group as well. Um, so this is just a, let's turn the feature on. Let's see if it behaves the same way as we remember it behaving over a year ago. Um, and, uh, record that as a part of an OKR and see what happens from there. Uh, so FYI disruption is coming. Uh, all I ask is lean into it. Let's see how, let's see how either good or bad or what's changed or if it's even workable. So let's not shy away from things we would normally be doing. Any questions on that? before moving on. So just to vocalize mine, I was asking you to ping. Um, my understanding of the current status is that they will not be notified just because you're an approver, you are not notified. So we need to explicitly ping and ask for approval from EMs or Nikhil. Okay. So that's, that's our current strategy, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Alrighty, um, I'll move on. Uh, so this, so next week is the beginning of the end of year festive period. Uh, I'm out the next two weeks. A lot of people are out next week and some of the following. Should we just go ahead and cancel the next two weeks of this meeting? All right, done. All right. <laughs> and so just wanted to get that out for a vote and just make sure everybody was good with it. I'll do that right after we hang up. Taylor. Welcome All back. right, so if you haven't, definitely check out uh, Sid's latest investor update. It should be in your email inbox if you don't happen to check that frequently. Um, some highlights, mobile app set got shouted out in it as part of our 13.6 release, 13.5 release. Um, there's also some language basically around the success of Secure as a stage and growth of ARR from our top accounts with Gold and Ultimate, as well as our um, number of customers paying us more than $100,000. What's particularly interesting for us is that SAST is a large part of that story. Um, the way I like to put it is SAST is the gateway drug of security scanning. Uh, it's generally what customers are going to start doing before they advance into more uh, uh, sort of additional scan types, DAST, uh, fuzzing, et cetera. Um, so we're directly impacting the growth here. Um, I'm super proud of what we've accomplished this year. We've <laughs> moved a lot around. Um, and I, I think we're really seeing that uh, success from our customers' commitments, both in financial, but also in the length of deals. Seeing deals like HEB sign up for four years of security is pretty unheard of in the security space. Um, so truly, Fantastic work this year, um, and we've got lots of things planned moving forward. So yeah, definitely take a look at that investor update. Any questions on that? Okay, Lucas. So, uh, the biggest blocker currently for splitting common into uh, sub packages is naming. So please contribute to that issue. 
if you would like, we need to name a namespace and stick things under it. And common is not our best one. Cool, on a grade. Oh, Miss Maku. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if there's a process for team members to suggest new scanners or analyzers and maybe share a basic proof of concept for those. Basically, file an issue. Uh, uh, it needs to be more than just in, uh, my humble request is it needs to be not just integrate this thing. It needs to be along what capability it provides. Um, uh, it's, it's the response to the issue that will determine what the thing is. It's what are we trying to do with this thing. It's, it's, it's the business driver um, uh, that determines that it that helps inform prioritization, or at least that's the way that I look at this. Yeah, that that makes sense. Um, so, uh, point A, I guess that kind of leads into: Are there any practical prerequisites, like before rec suggesting, "Hey, we should support this scanner natively"? Uh, things to look at, like does this scanner support JSON output, for example? Um, or is it pretty much, uh, if there's demand, make an issue for it? So, I mean, I, that would be the main thing is that we want to see demand. I think we get hit by random requests for things. I think my latest favorite was a request for Perl support. Um, we don't hear that often enough. So when it's a, a language that's not widely used or that we don't have a large number of customers using, it's probably not going to get prioritized. Now, I think this is where we get into sort of these unofficial integrations. I know there's a number of them that have happened. Um, Sonar Cube comes to mind. Um, there's been a few others that I can't think of off the top of my head, but basically that's kind of where we get into that unofficial integration territory. I do, I'm very interested when customers want to do that integration work or when our uh, SAs or TAMs want to do it as well. Um, I'm, I'm never going to stop y'all from writing unofficial integrations, but we just need to be very careful about how they get posed to a customer that we're not officially supporting them, that it's not part of our product, that it's purely on them to run and integrate with. In terms of your question about what about do they need to support JSON export or JSON output? I think largely yes. If there's any chance that we're going to pull that into an official integration, it needs to work the way the rest of our scanners do. So this is where anytime I see these sort of ad hoc unofficial integrations forming, I try to steer them towards the integration framework uh, because that is the best chance of us picking that thing up and turning it into part of the product. And in fact, a great example of that is the uh, HUB contribution of MobSF. We worked with them to make sure that they were following our integration guidelines, and then we sort of picked that up and uh, moved it forward. So that that's kind of my advice as you see these new areas or want to go try building integrations. I think one additional thing that I would like to see personally is for us to, rather than just keeping those integrations off on some hidden branch or some namespace for an essay, I would like to see those things moved into like an unofficial repository somewhere or even contributed back to open source. So if it's ex expanding an additional tool, like push that GitLab configuration back to that open source tool so that other people can discover it. All right, very helpful. Thank you. Oh, and I see I got a whole bunch of helpful links. Thank you for adding those. Um, oh, I guess, yeah, one one final question is in the SAST office hours last week, we were discussing scanning infrastructure as code for security vulnerabilities. And it kind of seemed to blur the line between a linter and 
some something that's actually scanning an application. Um, so what would I guess what would fall into the SAST umbrella and what would fall outside of that with regard to linting or um, analyzing things that are not application code per se? I would argue infrastructure as code makes infrastructure part of a deployed application. So, but we're getting into some very, very philosophical and definition areas here. Um, the uh, prior art for this is CubeSec, which is already scanning configurations for Kubernetes deployments and Helm, and Helm charts. Uh, so, uh, if it is the if it is the static analysis of checked in code into a repository, it is potentially in scope for this group with a hard line on potentially, or excuse me, the potentially being the most important word of that sentence, because we're not going to go into dependencies. We're not going to look at the containers themselves, but that's me. I So I, I, I agree with that in theory, uh, yeah. but to describe the current state, we don't do a good job of that. There are certain, um, we, we don't even do the good job of that on secret detection where GoSec actually has one rule that checks for hard coded tokens. So if we wanted to be purists about it, we would actually exclude some of the existing rules in our SAS tools that are relevant to secret detection or dependency scanning, but we don't. Um, theoretically, that should just be filtered out by the vulnerability dashboard by doing some deduping of CVEs, but um, we don't currently enforce that very strictly. Now, uh, others of our linters are just linters. We just use, um, we filter the linter rules by security specific rules, which is basically what we do for ESLint. Uh, do, do we have a plan for uh, supporting SaaS for infrastructure as service uh, in the next uh, year. Do we have that in the roadmap recently? We've got an issue open for uh, infrastructure scanning. It's definitely something that's on my mind and we're starting to see customers express interest in it. I know this is an area in particular that Sam White is looking into as part of Protect. So I, I suspect our ambitions with growing our Protect revenue will probably cause us to do some integrations on the SaaS side for infrastructure scanning, but I don't think we have a hard plan for that at this moment. Anything else on this one? This was, this was a rich conversation. Any, anything else folks want to talk about while we're all here? Okay, then with that being said, um, if we were to use static analysis weeklies as a barometer of how complete a year is, congratulations, you have completed 2020 since this is the last meeting of the year <laughs> in this series. Uh, so, um, uh, so hopefully everybody has a chance to uh, to, uh, to catch a break over the end of your festive period. Hopefully uh, folks can join us in the in happy hour later this week and uh, we'll talk soon. So see ya.